It's never too early to start thinking about education for our children. And uh, you know, some people think that, that that starts at elementary school, in kindergarten at five years old, but it's actually the first five years are, are really important as well. So uh, here today to talk about some early learning and, um, and everything that goes along with that, I have Sarah Riley. She is the Community Outreach Coordinator for the Early Learning Coalition of Polk County. Sarah, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. So what, tell me right off the bat, what is the Early Learning Coalition? The Early Learning Coalition of Polk County is um, mandated by the state to be in existence, really. And we head up all of the early learning in the county. We are the administers and overseers of school readiness, as, as well as voluntary pre-kindergarten or more known as VPK. So we head all of that up and what that looks like is that we have over 350 providers that are um, at various sites throughout the county who have quality child care that we monitor because they contract with us and they you know do that on a yearly basis and then these children can go into quality child care at these locations but it's all done through us and we monitor these programs as well. It's probably hard to summarize everything that the Early Learning Coalition is doing and provides in, in just a, a brief summary but it seems like it's a pretty good idea to have all of these separate providers answer to one entity like, like you all because it kind of sets the bar it sets the rules. Now, do you have um, do you have a state or federal entity that that you all answer to? We do actually. Since we are mandated by this mandated by the state, we have um, we have to answer to the Florida Office of Early Learning. We're in partnership with them, as well as um, kind of we're overseen by the Department of Education as well. Okay. So talk to me a little bit about, um, well, y you mentioned VPK, Voluntary Pre-Kindergarten, and mm -hmm. that's before kindergarten. So how, how does somebody get their child in, signed up for VPK, and, and does it just start with four, or is it earlier than that? Voluntary Pre-Kindergarten is for all four-year-olds. Okay. The, there are no eligibility requirements other than that a child is four. Um, for the summer program coming up here, just as long as they have been four this year and they would be starting school this next school year, then they would do VPK this summer. And as far as for next year, VPK and starting in the fall, they would need to be age four by September 1st. And we now have open enrollment online, which we're very excited for because it's going to make things so much easier for everyone and parents are gonna love it everything that they need is right there on our website online. We're at elcpolk.org and they're just gonna click on the Enrolling Now button. They'll see a little star in Enrolling Now and they can click there and they're going to be able to find everything they need including the application to begin that process. Okay, do you have any anything that reaches out to uh, newborns or you know up to b before four years old? We do. Um, our school readiness program um, that is for children age zero to five and then children up through age 11 as far as after school programs and that and what makes school readiness different from voluntary pre-kindergarten is that this program is income based. It's for income eligible children and families. So it's going to be children and families who are at 150% or below of the poverty level. Um, and they will, a lot of times they're referred to us through DCF or Heartland for Children, um, depending on the family situation. If there's, um, you know, sometimes if there's been neglect or abuse involved or whatever, this is allowing the children to be in uh, quality care and you know have a nurturing environment for learning and then um, you know like I said it's it's income eligible so for the parents as long as they are either enrolled in school or working then their child would be eligible as well if their um, income is in the right place for that. 
again, that all goes is filtered through the Early Learning Coalition, correct? Mm -hmm, correct. Pe the parents aren't going to the individual providers to sign up or register, right? Right, correct. Um, we are helping the parents find quality education for their child. So that way, let's say you're a brand new parent and maybe your child, you know, for the first year or so was with grandma and grandpa. Well, you don't want to just send your child to any school. You want them to be enrolled in a quality preschool, a quality facility where they're going to get the same kind of learning that you would want your child to have. And so we have providers that contract with us that have to maintain certain standards. They have to um, meet the requirements, not only that, that you know we say are what they have to do, but also they're mandated by the state as well. And um, we have quality initiatives in place. We have our Quality Counts program that um, involves providers choosing to have even higher standards than, than those that are the minimum required. But overall, we have quality specialists who go in and monitor all of these providers on a monthly or every six weeks basis. So that way you know that your program is being monitored and those providers are being held accountable to give the best education to these children as they grow. And I'm sure to also make sure that it's safe and yes. and clean mm -hmm. and that the people that are working there are trustworthy and right. all that stuff. Right. Now, if, uh, if a parent wants to get their child enrolled in one of the various programs, do they tell you where they want to go or do you give them a list of, of just this one is what is available so you have to drive or right. how does that work? Right, what we do is we have um, a child care resource and referral um, re person basically, she's like the specialist in the resource area as well as the parent counselors who help guide all of the parents on where they need to go and what they need to do next. So. They might ask questions like, you know, are you, do you have transportation? Are you able to get somewhere? You know, how important is, is that? Do you need a site that has transportation? Because there are sites that do transportation. And, um, or maybe they just need to be really close by a certain site for different reasons. Or, you know, maybe that's not even highest on their priority. They've got other priorities, you know, such as you know, just what the facility looks like and how it feels when they walk in for their child and, and all of those things. And the parent counselors and the resource and referral person can help guide them in that. Okay. Now, all of these things are going on all the time, right? Uh, Correct. An ongoing process. Mm -hmm. But you have you have one event that's coming up or sort of a week-long event. It's, the, it's Children's Week, right? Correct. Yes. We do um, every year. We participate in Children's Week, and this is a statewide event. You're going to hear about Children's Week um, throughout the state of Florida. And this year, it's April 6th through 11th, but we every year have Children's Day, and that day is April 4th this year. And what we'll do is we'll partner with Family Fundamentals and Success by Six, along with United Way, who um, help us put on an event. We have the event at Family Fundamentals located in Lakeland. And this year we're doing things a little bit different, but we're excited. We're involving some community members. Um, the president of Polk State College, Eileen Holden, will be a speaker there um, that day. And it's going to be short and sweet, but it's going to be focused on um, early learning for these children. And they're going to be able to do different activities regarding um, you know, children's issues and, and things, and they get to walk away with a book from the coalition as well. And the children who are going to be there are just a few sites that have been invited to be there. Um, this is not an open public event, but we definitely want the public to be aware that Children's Week is coming up and, and to help support and that kind of thing. But we will have other community members present and just have their support on Children's Day. So we're looking forward to that. The proclamations that are in March um, for Children's Day, we're going to have um, several cities throughout the county who are issuing proclamations for Children's Day and just kind of, you know, making that announcement that it's um, a very important thing in our community. 
And so those are public and um, community members can go ahead and be a part of that if they'd like to be. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for coming on the show and, and telling us about, uh, about the Early Learning Coalition of Polk County and, mm -hmm. and all the great initiatives that are going on. Yes, thank you so much for having me. If you um, would like more information, then you can go ahead and check on our website at elcpolk.org. Um, also, you can contact the coalition directly at 1-877-ELC-POLK very easy to remember and you can find us on Facebook as well and look for upcoming events. So if you are a parent with a young child or even just know somebody, maybe you're an aunt or a grandparent, um, you want to make sure that you get in touch with the Early Learning Coalition of Polk County. They are, uh, this is for children who are uh, birth all the way up to, to five, not just kids that are about to go into kindergarten. You can get more information about voluntary pre-kindergarten online at elcpolk.org or you can call 877-ELC-POLK. Mark your calendars for Children's Day, April 4th, and Children's Week, April 6th through 11th, and just celebrate the children in your life.